At the foot of the Sierra Nevada, on the Sabika Hill, stands the imposing bastion of the last Sultanate of Al-Andalus. Plenty of walls and towers, the Red Castle comes into view. The Alhambra The Alhambra was the Palatine city where the Sultan, head of state of the Kingdom of Granada, lived and ruled during the Nasrid dynasty. Planned and developed according to the laws of medieval and Hispanic Islamic urbanism, it is the culmination of the prolific evolutionary process of Hispanic Muslim society, heir to the civilization of medieval European Islam. It is a monument made up of different artistic elements from different eras, the result of an evolution over time. The citadel of the Alhambra was protected from the countryside and the city by its elevated natural topography, isolated and connected militarily through its wall, which along its perimeter has four large defensive gates, almost equidistant. The fortified city is configured in three independent zones, a military residential area, the Alcazaba, reserved for the guard, a palatine area, residence of the Sultan and his family, and a medina, a courtly, administrative and artisan city. The interior of the citadel was planned in a certain order, whose main axis would be the Kajay Real. Due to the various uses of the interior, there seems to be a set of unrelated architectural volumes, however, the common factor throughout the complex is to respond to a demand for military control. Its forms outwardly displayed an image of power, of a safe haven, with imposing masses and sober volumes of undoubted plastic value, with a tendency towards simplicity and geometric regularity. The precise adaptation to the topography and to the needs of each moment meant that the same shapes were not repeated, being able to appreciate a rich variety of volumes and links between towers, walls and other buildings. The Alcazaba becomes a small city in itself, as it has the necessary facilities for a contingent of specialized soldiers. According to its military character, it was raised in the highest area of the hill for strategic reasons. In the Alcazaba, a large square plan construction stands out, visible from a great distance, the Tower of La Bella, which articulate spaces, has four floors and is topped by a terrace, for defensive reasons has the best views. It is crowned by a series of battlements and a bell gable. In the Palatine area, the Comes Palace and the Palace of the Lions stand out, since the 14th century they form the old royal house, to differentiate it from the new royal house, made up of a Renaissance palace built by Emperor Charles V. The architectural forms of the Nasrid Alhambra were composed with simple formulas or schemes that were adapted to each place and the needs of the moment. The most common solution were the courts with a strongly geometric plan. They have an axis of symmetry, and sometimes two orthogonal axes. The outbuildings are distributed around the court, in which an intimate character is manifested and open to the senses, so that, when passing inside, the introvert gives rise to a burst of light, color, sense and imagination. On the main axes of the courts there were light arcades or porticos, with which comfortable galleries are generated. Normally they had axial symmetry, an uneven number of openings and a clear hierarchy of the central arch, with more width and elevation with respect to the lateral arches. Its slender columns were modulated with criteria closer to sculpture than to constructive reasons, with beautiful capitals that supported light panels of plasterwork, finished off and protected by elegant wooden eaves. In the Alhambra, the absence of deep reliefs causes feelings of lightness or weightlessness. The surfaces that enveloped the interior spaces were dominated by geometric designs tending to divide, to the small, 
to create successive superimposed layers with mathematical implications of great richness and visual harmony. The ornamental and calligraphic patterns caused suggestive spatial effects, as they were perceived differently depending on the distance from the observer or the lighting, offering the possibility of different simultaneous readings. The gaps that articulated interior and exterior spaces were carefully designed to protect privacy, with visual or light filters, such as lattices or bifurers. Among these gaps there were unrepeatable formulas. The Kuba, combination of cubic or prismatic space and upper dome, with a great symbolic tradition as a royal hall. The cube symbolizes the earth and the sphere the sky. These volumes used to finish off the main axes of the large patios. This formula governs the Hall of Ambassadors, the Hall of the Two Sisters and the Hall of the Abenzaraxes. The entrance to the palaces took place through the courts of the Meswa. In the Meswa the people were received, according to a usual formula in the Muslim world. After successive courts, the so-called Court of Quarto Dorado was accessed, with a sophisticated façade topped with a prodigious wooden eaves. This would give access to the Comer's Palace, seat of the executive power, with formal functions and a more rigid or ceremonial architecture. And to the Palace of the Lions, a place of recreation, of greater intimacy, for the enjoyment of sultans with their relatives, friends or poets, with a daring architecture, with multiple symmetries and axes. The Palace of Comez is distributed around a huge rectangular court with north-south orientation. A huge body of water rises in the center of the patio. It has the function of creating a microclimate to refresh the environment in the summer and the reflection of light to improve the illumination inside the rooms. The building is equipped with corridors on the four sides, the smaller sides consist of porticos with seven arches on marble columns, in front of the main rooms. Attached to one of these, the northern one, there is a huge tower that stands out from the wall. The other great palace that makes up the Palatine area of the Alhambra is the so-called Palacio de los Leones, known for the lions that surround the fountain in the central patio. The various rooms are distributed around it, behind a delicate arcaded gallery that completely surrounds it. The compositional axes are reinforced by four gutters that pour the water to the base of the central fountain. Slender marble columns, topped by proportionate cubic capitals, support the galleries. Most of its arches and columns do not have a constructive but a decorative purpose, the aesthetic value of the play of light and shadow is underlined, it is achieved through the superposition of Mukha Nas arches made in plaster. The two most notable corbas of the palace are located on the minor axis, north-south. In order to balance the composition, the smaller rooms located on the east-west sides have two different pavilions in front of their respective porticos. In the Palace of the Lions, the Nasrid architectural and decorative geometry and proportions reach their maximum development. The landscape and architecture of the Nasrid Alhambra must be understood together with the water and gardens, which play a crucial role in its practical and conceptual organization. The garden in Al-Andalus was an element present in the language of luxury or prestige. Water symbolizes in the Alhambra the noblest, the most precious, that which purifies, the hope of an Eden. The creation of paradise on earth would constitute a spiritual desire for the Nasrid people. An example that illustrates the intimate relationship between architecture and water is the Henorilife, a recreation palace built on the Asecchia Real, which would be adorned with fountains that still cause admiration today. The palace occupies the upper part of a property formed by several orchards of labor and trees, organized in paratas artificially created thanks to thick retaining walls. The Nasrid Alhambra symbolizes the artistic peak of the Kingdom of Granada, last bastion of Al-Andalus, 
ruled by a dynasty that struggled to survive for nearly two and a half centuries, leaving us a refined and fragile architectural sample, destined to disappear, and that surprisingly has survived over the centuries, threatened, modified or restored. If you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up and share it, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.